how should we understand the homecoming of Cristiano Ronaldo? The iconic Portuguese footballer's return to Manchester United has already seen him score three goals, two in his league debut, and one in yesterday's road loss to Young Boys, part of the Red Devils' Champions League campaign. Hello everyone, this is Reb Brad, and you're listening to the Soccer Chaplains United podcast from the Touchline. I'll confess, I'm a Man United fan and a Ronaldo fan as well, and I'm not a bandwagoner. It was my first experience of English Premier League football, and I was watching Ronaldo feature on the left side for Manchester United in a 4-0 drubbing of Watford United FC back in 2006. It was a memorable night, one in which I was dazzled and amazed to watch Ronaldo, who had a goal and assist, and I watched his magical moves as he moved up and down the flanks. Well, Ronaldo's time that he spent in Spain and Italy for the past 12 years weren't lost on many, as a staggering number of people went out and purchased Ronaldo jerseys once it was announced he would retain his original number 7. The media and fan buzz around Ronaldo's return has been epic, to say the least. But stay with us a while, we're going to revisit another story of homecoming that has some similarities. We're back in just a moment. He's found the space, and he's found the back of the net! Just a little off foot, thinking he's going to go far post. Not strong enough with his right hand. Whips that one in. Far post, almost made him in, and they have! He has the hat-trick! The second in his career! The third of the night! The hat-trick hero! Talked about you're not going to be able to sustain that kind of pressure. the corner, goes towards the near post, and you're the angle, and what a goal! What a goal! If there's a popular story amongst the human race, it is a story of homecoming. We see it in videos of soldiers returning from active duty deployments to their children at home. As parents, we may experience it when a child who lives or goes to school in another part of the world comes back to us. We read about homecomings in the pages of the Bible in the Holy Scriptures. Especially in the stories that we find in the Bible, homecoming stories are joyous moments of celebration. Whether we're reading about the return of Israel's Ark of the Covenant and King David's jubilation in 1 Chronicles 13-16, through or the return home of the wayward son in Jesus' parable, found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, verses 11-32. through Now, we'd have to be naive to believe that all homecomings are joy-filled celebrations. Even in the two biblical narratives, there are naysayers. For David, Michal, his wife, whom was given to him in marriage from the former king Saul, despised David's expressions of joy that were public and, frankly, probably embarrassing. In the parable of the prodigal son, it was the elder brother who refuses to go in and celebrate the younger brother's return. Certainly, Ronaldo's return to United probably isn't without its own likely drama. I had a laugh at a meme put out by Footy Humor, which mimics Ronaldo meeting his new teammates at United. The video meme, a spinoff of a Key and Peele Comedy Central sketch, shows some of the supposed tensions that might be amongst Ronaldo's teammates. But tensions and naysayers aside, I want to highlight the beauty of what homecomings can and should be. So let's look at the text from Luke 15 real quick. To sum up the first part of the story, essentially a father has two sons. The youngest wants his inheritance early, and he leaves home, essentially wastes a fortune, and returns home hungry and destitute after a period of time. So let's pick up on the son's return. Verse 17. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired men have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. And I'll leave it there for right now. This is one of my favorite and perhaps, I think, one of the most powerful parables that Jesus taught. While I don't have time to highlight every point, I want to simply point out a few things as they relate to homecoming, or we might even say homegoing stories. 
Let me also say that I don't intend for you or I to equate much of Ronaldo's return to United to this parable, but rather this homecoming is reminiscent of a few things out of the story. And no matter who you are in the game, you might be a parent waiting for that son or or that daughter, that lost child to return. You might be a manager or coach that needs reconciliation with an athlete. You might be a director or owner that needs to see a professional relationship resolved. Well, I think there are several teaching points from this text. And the first is this. We see in the in this first part of the story, there's this phase or this sense of restoration. Now, in my 20 years of serving as a football chaplain, there have been only a handful of homecoming stories that I might be able to recall. And a few of them have been somewhat significant. An athlete comes back to become coach or manager. A footballer returns maybe to become a club ambassador or technical director or another role in the front office. Not all leavings have happened well, though. In fact, the ones that I can recall most prominently within our club, each quote-unquote parting, had some painful or difficult edge to it. So restoration is needed. Restoration of a relationship, restoration of respect, Restoration of something is usually needed when someone returns or comes back home. Here in the story of the returning son, we see that there is a restoration. The son comes in and in his own mentality, he puts his status as slave, as hired person, hired man. But his father elevates him to son. The father essentially restores the status of the lost wayward son to his full and meaningful place in the family. I recall one time when my father returned after several years to a company that he had once worked for in sales. His position had essentially been eliminated, but the new company gave my father his tenure and seniority that he had accrued formally with the other company. Now, I wasn't personally there for the negotiations, but I recall at the time there was a a positive receptivity because this company didn't have to give those things to my father, but they had. Perhaps in the case of Ronaldo, the receiving of his original number seven jersey is a similar sign of a maybe a restored history or this iconic place amongst the Manchester United team. The truth is, though, that we're all in need of a returning, a returning back to God is what I mean. And we really don't deserve the status as son or daughter. But God, portrayed here in the parable of the lost son as the father, God doesn't treat us as we deserve. Rather, God treats us with grace and love, and we receive more than we deserve, more than we could ever hope for or imagine. And what I love most about this parable of Jesus is that the restoration of the wayward son by the father has these tangible elements to it. And that's the second point of emphasis I want to make today. You know, it's one thing to welcome a person back into the fold, but it's another level to go to the point that this father does with his returning son. Each item mentioned carries with it a substantial piece toward the holistic restoration of his son. The quote-unquote best robe, maybe from the father's own wardrobe, it would have brought immediate distinction. Everyone would have known who this person was. The ring, a symbol of authority and honor. Sandals on the feet. You know, slaves back then were typically barefoot. And we get the sense that the son has lost pretty much everything clothing, sandals. He comes back with nothing to name himself. And so the father is restoring all of these pieces. And of course, the feasting that was soon to follow, each of these items are unique identifiers that the son is no longer lost. And the son certainly is not a slave. They denote position, acceptance, and many, many more things. Now, certainly, We could probably draw out some parallels in Ronaldo's return, the media frenzy, the fans' receptivity. If there was ever a bad or hard feeling about Ronaldo's leaving for Real Madrid a number of years ago in his absence, it's probably long been forgotten, especially after scoring those goals. Now, I cannot say that I've seen this often in football stories of returning. And maybe sometimes when someone's retired from the club, they've been honored, or perhaps an athlete or figure who's achieved high levels of success, they've been given gifts or uh, rewards or awards or things. Maybe it could be the size of the club that I serve or our relatively short history. I think there might be better examples elsewhere in the football world. But as it relates to spiritual homecomings, I know more stories like, like the one where the one who's left and comes back has this overwhelming sense at their return. 
especially those who have left and abandoned God for so long. They feel overwhelmed at a sense of grace and love and peace. Uh, An example, a businessman whose livelihood is exponentially blessed and his business flourishes. Or a criminal. Sometimes I've, I've met convicts that they felt like their crimes were such that they could never be forgiven. They couldn't forgive themselves, and yet the slate's been wiped clean. Or there's just that troubled spirit who's absolutely at peace and ease on a deathbed at the end of life. There is this powerful effect that coming home spiritually has on a person. And many times it can feel ethereal. It can feel almost like a dream. It's nearly unbelievable the way that God's grace and love restores us. So much so that we we feel like we have to pinch ourselves to see if it's real. And yet that reality includes a joyous celebration. And oftentimes, and this is what I'm going to close with, there's this celebration that God gives that's excessive. In Jesus' parable, the father kills the fattened calf, likely an animal reserved for only the most special of occasions, an animal years in the making. And in the celebration of life, or this returning, this homecoming, the death of this one animal, this special animal, is the feature of a great party, a party that includes music and dancing. Now, truth be told, I have two left feet. But I pray heaven's a transformative place where even someone like myself can one day dance a healthy jig with the best of them. But it's key to notice that uh, this piece of celebration, because it does not come without a cost. It all comes, in fact, out of the Father's generosity, from his own life savings, from, from what he's worked hard to achieve and earn. Well, friend, no matter where you are at this moment, I want you to realize the power of coming home. Certainly, there are special stories of the one who returns home to a football club or, or even to a country. There are special stories of the one who returns home after being missing or, or being gone for a long time. But perhaps the greatest stories of homecoming are the ones where we return spiritually. Maybe to a faith of our childhood that we once left behind, or to a relationship where we finally realize the goodness of our Heavenly Father, the goodness of God Himself. I want to encourage you to read the whole of Luke chapter 15 this week. Read it and see what it means for you and for me and for God when a lost person comes home. Let me close us today with a homecoming prayer. Father, I'm coming to my senses. I'm making my way back home. I have been leaving and been gone for far too long. I have only spiritual poverty and destitution to show for. Take me back. Take me back. Restore me as son, as daughter, though I deserve to be nothing more than slave. Robe me with warmth and love and protection, that I might know I am cherished. Ring me that I might take back the authority you have given me in my humanity. Outfit my feet, that I might walk, or even run, on ahead in confidence with you. And let us celebrate, let us party and feast and dance, because it's time for home going, it's time for homecoming. See me, no matter how far off, and run. Amen. Dear friend, this is Reb Brad, eagerly anticipating your own homecoming from the Touchline.